All right. Turn that off. Oh, you can hear me. I've got this all set up upstairs. My extra computer that I had in the other room. And I got a mic right here. So hopefully my voice is, you can hear well. <laughs> What's up, Dylan? What's up, cars? Hey, did you check out that link for that Revo? It's on the uh, soccer corner. It's like, it's uh, cheaper than normally. It was like 84 bucks instead of. $89.99, that little Escort was a blue and white one. I picked up one myself, so I don't know if you got that or yet. Not at all. Can you hear me good as well, though, through the mic? Uh, okay. Can everybody hear me? There's three people on. Can you hear me clearly through this microphone? I want to make sure that's working right. So just give me an acknowledgement. I'm looking toward the screen here because I have the screen right here and the camera's right here and the workbench is here, so... When I tilt, okay, thank you. So when I tilt this camera down, you can see everything. So what I'm going to cover on Scratch Build is just where I start from. Uh, the one thing you want to have that's really important, and I'm not going to, why don't I hold off? Because I am coming here a little early. I want to wait till other people come because it's not 3 o'clock yet, so I won't say anything more. <laughs> but uh, uh, anybody basically could Scratch Build. I don't care who you are. Uh, very easy. Here's an example, one that I did before I left the old house. This is a, a Ford resin body. And then I have another one here that I've completed, but I need to do the interior on it. And, so, and that's this blue Ford right here. And like I said, anybody could do this. There's nothing hard about this. 132nd is a little bit smaller, maybe a teeny bit tedious. But if you build a 132nd, chassis it's going to be the same thing for a 125th because all you're doing is making it bigger for the 125th you may use different uh, you know axle size axles if you want you could use an eighth or three thirty seconds it's kind of like up to you what you want to do depending on what proxy you're doing it in or for like the showdown i think it is um piranha motors not not predator motors so you got to go by the rules that Harry posts up and you just follow that and they'll tell you the size tires and all that and wheels. And just go from there, but it's, it's not really hard to do. I've done it quite a bit, so it's uh, fairly easy. So we got like six minutes and uh, I'll turn on a light because it's too bright and it's shiny. But this is will be area, uh, excuse me, area 51. This will be Hangar 1 Raceway right here. This is a pretty good size room. As you can see, I have some boxes there in the corner. Uh, and looking forward to building the track. I'm going to need a lot of advice from a couple of buddies that have done it before. So I'll be probably calling them and asking them and picking up the wood next year and just starting on it. Uh, I'll probably do a video on the process of it. It's just to, to kind of, I guess, videography the journey. So, but, uh, right below us is area 51 in the other room that you've seen. So, you got to run back up and down stairs. So uh, there is a little work area down there. I'll probably make something small of a work area just for, you know, basic tuning of cars. Anything scratch building or more uh, involved will be up in this room for, you know, scratch build stuff because I have all my stuff here, all my paints and things, uh, everything that I get to think of to do the cars. But so anyways, we got five minutes. Anybody have any quick questions? I'll wait five minutes before I turn the camera down and I start. Um, oh, I see none. Unless people are at work doing stuff and they shouldn't be watching this. <laughs> oh, all depends. I was supposed to be at work today, but I was, we were supposed to pick up a relative, but we got up early in the morning. We we're heading you know, out there, and he called said that he missed the flight. It's kind of turned into a big mess, so. I've kind of wasted a day, uh, an off day, kind of, for doing, you know, preparing to go, you know, pick a relative up. But, you know, things go wrong and it happens. So we'll have to wait and see when uh, that's going to, you know, how would you say he'll be able to get his flight here? <laughs> so, but um, four minutes. We got four people. That's cool. 
and this is going to be recorded obviously so when it, it's all said and done it'll be on you know the area 51 page the yeah, youtube page in the video section <clears throat> but uh um one thing i do want to note one thirty second car bodies are harder to get uh, if you could go with a 3D print or if you could find model kits for 132nd or if you can do resin bodies or find somebody who knows how to do resin bodies and buy one from them, that's probably the best bet to really get uh, 132nd bodies. It's really hard to find them because this is why I build 125th scale because if you look in 125th scale, there are a ton of cars for 125th. That's why I like 125th because of the variety. Uh, it's got more variety, but nothing against 132nd. You can get a, uh, see a body from like a, a fly body or something and make a, a brass chassis for that as well. If you desire, I mean, you don't want to deal with the fly chassis and messing with it because those take a lot of work. Or you find a Carrera body that's lying around, which that was my first car that I built was a, a Carrera GTO. And I made it the chassis from the stinker, the stinker build, uh, that Harry video, the videos that Harry produced for people to understand how to do scratch building, which is a great video. It's like five videos, really, really good, good videos to watch. So after you watch this, you could kind of watch that and kind of kind of get an idea. He's, you know, he does it a little differently than I am than I am doing it. You guys could do it the way you feel you're comfortable with doing it. You know, as long as the car, you know, runs good and you have everything where it needs to be, it, it's all good. I like to build a view. You want to second VW bug using an airfix body that's pretty cool yeah that'd be a good one i know of scale electric maybe uh, beetles but i don't know if there's any bodies lying around but if i guess airfix has something like that that'd be a good idea you could turn anything into a slot car if you could you know if you want it's not not a big deal but let's see where are we at we're at two minutes so two minutes here See if anybody else wants to join us. We got four people. That's cool. That's cool. That's good. We'll just uh, start in a minute or two here. Uh, ready, ready, ready. So I um, hope everybody can hear me clearly. The other three people besides uh, De Leon Slotcar Raceway, he already acknowledged that the mic's working good. I hope all everybody else can hear me well and clearly. Uh, I made sure I was messing with this and tested the videos that I recorded to make sure that they're working with the microphone, uh, with the computer I have here. I got a real tiny computer I bought uh, at the other place that I use for Area 51, but I'm going to use it up here since I bought another computer for downstairs. So, but anyways, we got a minute here. We got a minute. Let's see if anybody else is going to show up or if they may show up late. That's fine. No biggie. And uh, let me turn on the light. Let me actually point the camera down. So the camera's going to flip down. So if you see it flip down, don't freak out. <laughs> and there's our work area. And I'm going to turn on light. Oh, uh, that's not too bright. There you go. Perfect. Okay. Oh, everything's falling here. All right. That's nothing important. I just hit my drawer here. All right. Uh, we're going to start. So... Can everybody see everything clearly and hear everything clearly? You just give me a yes. One person at least or two. Give me a yes on the chat. I want to make sure you, everybody could see everything. Gotcha. Thank you, sir. Anybody else? Don't be shy. <laughs> or are there lurkers out there just lurking and watching? Which is fine. <laughs> All right. Well, I got the Leon Slot Car Raceway. I believe him. He's the only one that's answering me, so I'm good. <laughs> All right. So what I generally start with is make sure I have the body. Now, this is a uh, 132nd resin body. This was a gift body uh, from HRW. It was, uh, we just got these as gifts. Uh, I don't know who makes these. They're not making them for a specific, you know, for order or anything. So this is a little bit unique like the other two cars I have. So this is a, uh, looks like a stock car, kind of got the front end of a Corvette, kind of looks like it's a really cool looking car, a little bit modern and a uh, really nice looking car. So the first thing we want to do is we want to measure what our wheel, what our uh, width is going to be in the body. So you get a ruler and you kind of see where you have the, 
where would you want the wheels at? So let's say we'll go, uh, it should be say, uh, man, 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 let me see. I'm going to say, so if I'm, see, so here's the deal. So if you have your, your ax, you got to remember, you got to, this is kind of like a, a sight thing. So if I'm going to go and measure the tube, because it's going to go in between this motor bracket here like this, right? And you don't have to worry about the motor bracket yet because you're trying to fit the width because initially it would be, you know, something like this. Obviously, that's upside down, right? But you have to take into account the width of the wheel, right? And then also the width of the tire, which you could shave these down, you know, after you true them up. Now, a lot of people don't have truers, but you can true these with sandpaper and just running these on the track on a piece of track and just doing it for now i know slot car corner is trying to get a tire truer out to the masses because we definitely need a tire truer i really have a hard time showing my tire truer because it kind of sucks that nobody has one so it's kind of like here i could do this but you can't because you don't have the tool i don't like to do that that's the reason why i don't really show my tire truer that much but anyways so what i'm going to do is i'm going to guess i would say we'll go uh Let's see. And so every body is always different. So let me look at this here. I'm going to say I'm going to go, let's start with three and a half uh, centimeters. All right. So I'm going to get this. And that's just the start. And I'll show you how you could trim it down if you need to. And the tools are uh, rat tail file. And that's to start with this to get you where, you know, to get you going and in the measuring tool what i'm going to do is measure this and mark it you know if i get in the way excuse me so i'm going to mark let me get my old man glasses because i can't see crap up close all right so i'm going to go three and a half i said centimeters just for shits and giggles so i'm going to mark here like that i'm going to grab my tubing cutter and i'm going to cut the tube and I'm going to put it right on the where the blade is going to go at. I don't know if you can see that, because this ain't really a, a super high-def 4K camera, but it's a high-definition camera, so I hope you can see what I'm seeing. But you want on the line there, and then you can squeeze this a little and just turn it as it gets loose. Just tighten it up again. And you can tighten it up some more. All right. And you just keep going until this will pop and break. Really easy to cut these brass pieces with this tubing cutter and all this stuff could this tubing cutter could be had through you know amazon amazon's got all the things you need if you want to ship to your door unless you could have somebody locally that has it i seem to find out where i go locally they don't have anything and there you go i just broke it off so here is three and a half that's about right and if you're a little bit over no biggie you could always trim that's one thing about brass you could trim then after you've cut it you're going to have it like a chamfered in and then what you're going to do is more you want to file these edges down so you could fit the oil light bushing on there and just take your time like that just make sure you got the edges kind of out of it this is where you could fit the bushing on and you get your bushing and your other bushing oh and i didn't do that in see the bushing won't fit over if you have that chamfer in you had to have it cleaned up so remember that. So we'll clean this end up. You could also use uh, chainsaw files. I think this is this should be uh, what was it? three thirty seconds at the tubing. Excuse me, not three thirty seconds. The tubing is damn. I can't remember the size of the drill bit, but or the bit. But uh, let me see. Hold on a second. I'm not prepared for that section there. Hello, Wayne Cassidy. Uh, hello, Paul Radcliffe. In UK, sound vision good. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. So glad you guys could join us. So I got this all down here. And I got this all like that. So there's your kind of the, the length of your ax, you know, the axle tube. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the wheels opened up. These are uh, CB design wheels, CBD 1100. They're 15 by 10s. And the tires we're using are PGT 2216 6FF. 
those are the urethane tires we're using paul gauge oh that's interesting oh there it is got to be careful with these little screws too because man once you lose them in the carpet especially this carpet i have now it's you're going to be really going crazy and it's always good to have spares which i do so i'm just going to get these set screws and put them in the wheels like so just get them in there so you don't lose them if you have a little brass material on your little area there you could always just you know use tape to sweep it up if you need to if you want to make it your area a little bit cleaner but it's brass so it's not going to kill anything okay and what we're going to do is we're going to use get our 332nd axles and i'm going to put them on the axle so i could get the tire on like that and i'm going to slip my tire on i slipped the funky side there's kind of like a funky side and then i smooth side i leave the smooth side out and i'm going to slip these over and these take a little bit to go on sometimes so slip these over and we're not permanently putting these on we're just putting these on the size the wheel width inside the body which that's the first step we do and i'm going to get this oh hold on a second I'm screwing up here so i'm going to get my oil lights and bushings in my tube i'm going to do that put them on and then i'm going to put the wheel on and lock it down and i'm going to get the tire throw it on I snap that in the back and there's your your wheel with what you're going to deal with so i'll get this i'll put it right here and you kind of get the general idea now that actually looks pretty good because they're kind of protruding out a little bit so it makes you got to look at it as from the aspect of how it looks on the body so that looks pretty cool i think if i went in too much it would look kind of weird so actually i think where i hit it right there is perfect see how that looks right there that looks pretty cool and then you could look at it from the rear to see what it looks like from the sides and you get an idea of what your axle width is so that's i think i nailed that right on the head there so and if you want to space it out a little more say if you need want to feel like he needs to space it out more you could use uh, nylon washers to do that to just bump them out now if you want to narrow this up then you take these off and take the wheel off and what you could do is you could file this down right here and just use a piece of sandpaper and file it down right if you have a piece of sandpaper thousand grits fine and just file it down and then you could use a caliper i didn't get into using a caliper <laughs> really right now because i wanted to kind of give you guys the basics of what we're doing here oh i got dull bush in there so you can also if you want and if you you know if you don't have a caliper that's fine for now you can start this way but i would recommend getting a caliper it's a real important tool to have and uh let me put this back on so let me get my caliper out get my caliper out hello lloyd lewis thank you for joining us so i'll get my caliper out oh, turned it on zero it all right, and you could also do this if you have your caliper. You can kind of measure your body, you know, like say you want to, you know, what your wheel width is. If you want to go less way, actually, if you want to get your wheel width is what five point five nine point seven eight. This is a little bit bigger. This is six point nine seven. <clears throat> so that's a wheel wheel width altogether. Now, when you're a uh, taking your cards and you know to like sending them into like home racing world if you're doing like showdowns obviously make sure you're within the uh, allowed width of the car and this is this is actually good right here there's a there's a minimum you could go and I'm, actually there's a maximum you could go excuse me so you want to go over the maximum <clears throat> excuse me so that's the start of it right there and then you you could grab the car and kind of sit it down on, on the block me see what it looks like and stuff like that and then what we could do now is you can move on to the fronts too you could use the same one actually that looks pretty good also that looks pretty good right there as well so what we'll do is we'll cut this the same length as the rear axle i have my dog coming in here now mitzi come on outside baby 
So let me get another piece of. I hope I have enough. Otherwise, I have to crack, crack open a new one. Well, I wasn't ready for that one. That's too small. Excuse me, guys. Actually, I have a piece right here with a dummy. Excuse me, I have it right here. <laughs> so we'll get the next piece and we'll do <clears throat> duplicate the same thing. Um, so what do we go? Three and a half of it? Yeah, three and a half. So we'll do three and a half again. Same deal, right? We'll do the same, same thing. Because we're going to duplicate this right here. And we'll cut our tubing. If it's a little bit too wide, you could shave it down, like I said, if you, you know, if you have a little bit too long. Actually, a little bit more is better, so don't short yourself out if you, you know, short yourself. So if it's a little bit longer, that's okay. You could always trim it down because you could always take away, but you can't add. That's something that I always was told, you know, and uh, it's, it's just if you make it a little longer, no big deal. You could cut it down or, you know, sand it down, shave it down. And we're cutting our front axle tube. Actually, you know what? I'm doing this wrong, guys. I'm totally going crazy here. Excuse me. I'm using the wrong tubing, actually. See? So I got another one for another car. So let's <laughs> scratch that part right there. Gosh. My head's going a little bit crazy here. Hold on a second. So what you would actually need is a different tubing. Forgive me. See? I make mistakes like everybody. I made it right on camera, and I knew I was going to do that because that happened. So... For the front axle, hold on a second. I got it right here. I feel like a dummy now. <laughs> but uh, let me see if I can get this out. This is the correct stuff. I think it should be 1145. One second here, guys. I'm sorry. So, okay. Here we go. <laughs> so, I got the wrong tubing. You don't want to use this. That's too thick. My fault. So, you want to use 1145 brass. This stuff is called 8130 from KNS, and this is 1145. So 11.45 is one eighth. So that's way this is for the front axle. Right here you see they fit in nice and smooth. So I want to go three and a half with this. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> totally uh, losing uh, my focus here on what I'm trying to do. So let's do this one at three and a half. Sorry. <laughs> oh, boy. That's what happens when you get old. So I'll just go mark it right here on the end because I got three and a half right about here. All right, so I got the right tubing this time. <laughs> and hey, soccer guy, how you doing? So I'm gonna get my tubing cutter for my correct size for my uh, front front axle. And I'm sorry about that. I wasn't thinking when I was cutting that other tubing. It's been a while since I've done scratch build. It's been like about a month and a half because of all the moving and all the. All the uh, getting ready to get out of the old house. Is there any advantage to using rod or tubing for the axles? Uh, it's up to you. I really don't notice any advantage. I mean, you could experiment. Now, here's one thing you could do, too, that someone has told me with him. So I know a guy who builds a lot of, like, chassis. And he's out of, I think, Ohio. I can't remember. But. He's a machinist, and he told me, believe it or not, that tungsten at 330 seconds is a good axle because it's got nice weight to it instead of, you know, regular axles like this. So it also adds as a, as, as, acts as a weight also as well. But really, to be honest, I would experiment. I don't know what the advantage would be, to be honest. Uh, it's up to you how you want to build your car. You could try it out and see if it works. And if it does work, let me know. Shoot, I'd, I'd like to know. So, I mean, that's how you learn from everybody else when they experiment and uh, find out what works and what works better. So, if you find out that works better, uh, De Leon, please do, please do tell. So, now that we've got this cut at three and a half, right, we're going to get this chamfered end down with our rat tail file, of course, and clean that up. You know, you just, just twist it. And we'll clean up that part of the brass until you can get your axle in there nice and easy. And it'll take a little bit sometimes just to do that. And get this out of the way. Shake this room. I have my dog right behind me here lying next to me. She is loves to hang out. 
All right, Minty, you could stay in here. Okay, so I'll get my axle. Now you see how it's still hard to put in? You still have to open this up a little. You could also get like a 332nd drill bit as well. Let me see if I have my drill bits around here. There we go. So say if that's getting a little hard to do, I'll get my 332nd drill bit. I'll get my pin vise, another tool you should have, pin vise. And I could open it up like that. Coming from the other end. There it goes. Kind of do that. Let's see if that works. A little bit tight, see? It's still tight. So we'll keep opening this up. Just like that. And another thing we can do also is we could get a little sandpaper and kind of just a little bit like that to kind of smooth it out and see if it'll get the axle to go through. And that's better right there. See, there you go. All the way through right there. Don't use tubing on the front so you put the rod through it. Different at the rear. See, Tony, I'm sorry, Tony. Don't use tubing at the front so you can put the rod through it. Different at the rear. Yeah, uh, yes, this is a different. If, if I'm understanding you correctly, Tony, and I hope, I hope I am. So this is 1145 tubing for the front axle. So you don't, I mean, you could use bushings. If you don't want to do this and use bushings, you can. I mean, you can, I'm, you can do it if you want. And I'm not saying you can't. There's other guys that do use just bushings as well. But I prefer this method because it's just my way of doing it. You guys, once you get kind of an idea how this is, you could experiment, and that's what I did. I experimented what works best with me. So you do what works best for you and what you feel is easiest for you. So I hope that answers that, sir. <laughs> so here we go. So we have our, you know, the tubing all opened up. So this will go through nice and easy. You don't want no binding because this will flow real nicely here. And then what we're going to do is we'll get our other wheels. Remember, be careful with those little, little, little damn set screws. Make sure that they come out, they don't bounce out, and they don't fly out. Because they will bounce out if you have a silicone pad. They kind of tend to take off. And looking for those is really a pain in the butt. So. Oh, no problem, Tony. You know, I'll... We all learn by just, you know, watching and seeing others. That's what's great about, you know, YouTube and videography. Before, I used to write articles and you'd have to read, you know, now with actual visualization. It, I'm a visualization type of person. That's the only way I could kind of learn myself. You know, in the industry that I work on, I had to visually see things. I could never really do it too easily. It usually take more time to actually read it in the book to see what would, you know, what would happen. So here we go. We got our we got our uh, front wheels on, or what's going to be the front wheels, and we're going to put our tires on. And we'll get the tube in here. We'll check it out, make sure it looks good. We'll get this on here like that. And put this on like that. <laughs> All right. All right. So here's our front. Here's our rear. So we're right about look about the same. You can get a caliper and measure it. So now we'll put the front. Look, let's see what those look like. And that looks pretty good right there. I'm pretty happy with that. And of course, you can measure, you know, itself without the tires because the tires are going to make them. You know, if you want to measure the width with a caliper. And there you go. There's both like that. And I, I like it where it's at. I think that's pretty cool. See? And again, if you need to shim these out, if you want to shim the front out, you can with nylon washers. So, but I, I think this looks pretty good so far. So, I mean, that's where you basically would start with this. It's just like that. Is uh doing your width of your wheels and it's important to have the model body with you 
if you try and do it without the model body, you're not going to know the width and how it's going to look. And then you can see what the car looks like, you know, from the side, from the front. That looks pretty cool. That looks pretty good. So, and again, as I build it, if I need to add more to the front to space it out, I can. So there's pretty much, now that you're done with the body, that's what you would use the body for is to, to assess your width of your front and rear and if you want to tuck it in more or have them stick out a little bit more and depending on what uh, proxy you're running what's the maximum and minimum width of you know the slot car what it needs to be so that's the first part of that so in the next part we'll go on to is uh cleaning this up first give me a sec here i don't like a dirty area so i'm gonna get myself some simple green and uh, just clean this up this is brass and just clean it up it smells nice just kind of wipe down the stuff let's get everything off of here and it's important to keep your area clean uh, in the business that i work at clean shop is a good shop so now that we've got this all done we could put the front wheels aside and what i do is i'm going to take these apart because i'm not going to use this so here you go what i was talking about if you wanted to where's my caliper you know do a measurement if you want to be accurate with what, what what is what you can see with the tires it won't be as wide so we got 5.72 right i think the fronts may be a little bit narrower but if they are you know what big deal if you want to you know add some shims you can so we got a little bit more narrower so this is 5.629 which i'm fine with i it looks good on the car. I went by what, what the car looked like. We got more questions here. Sorry. <laughs> so we got Wayne Cassidy. I'm at work. Break almost over. I'll have to watch the upload video later. No problem, Wayne. Have fun there at work. <laughs> Dylan, when spacing the uh, wheel spacing is very important. Cars with improper wheel spacing bother when the wheels aren't centered in the wheels of the wells. Yeah, I would agree with that. You know, that's important. That's a very good point. I see because I think the front of the car is narrower anyway. So uh, I'm good with where I'm at. I'm, I'm content where this is at. So I'm not going to, you know, further worry about it. So what I'm going to do next is now that I have my rears and I got the wrong tool here. Hey, crazy dog. Got a crazy dog. All right. Now that I got these. What I'm going to do is, I'll leave this axle over here. So I won't need the wheels. I'll need these, and I'll need the motor bracket. And this is what I'm going to start soldering. I'm going to get my jeweler's board. And these, these jeweler board, excuse me, I just dropped my motor bracket. Jeweler's board you could get from uh, Slot Car Corner or Amazon, but Slot Car Corner, I would probably get it through there because they sell these pins also. I think the pins are more expensive at Amazon, but you go ahead and take a look if you want. But I usually get everything from Slot Car Corner. Um, if you get a block, you can mark a center line, and these are kind of like the wheel widths I use. I use the marker and just, you know, you, if you could get a center line, it'd be kind of good because you could center your bracket. That's what you're doing. So now that I have all this, what we want to do first is clean all this stuff. This is went over this video I just posted recently about basic soldering is make sure you clean all your surfaces out. Uh, clean brass is happy brass. That's always been a quote. <laughs> and we want to clean the tube up because we're going to be soldering around the tube. And you can do a little bit there on the edges. Another question here. Uh, good day, Trav. What is in Australia? <laughs> Sounds like uh, sound is choppy now. Can't hear anything. Huh. Can anybody hear me right now? Is it still choppy? Need a confirmation if I'm still choppy. Okay. Tony says, right. How about you, DeLeon? Are we, are we still good now, or is it just a temporary thing that happened? Okay. All right. Well, I'll continue on. So, like I said, we want to clean all this up. So, we're going to clean the motor bracket, the outside of it here. 
clean the outside area and the inside as well. You get the piece and just sand it down. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Gladstone. Do that. Sand this down. <clears throat> Again, like I said, happy clean brass is happy brass. So we got that all cleaned up. We got this all nice and shiny. Then what we're going to do is we're going to pin this onto the board. Oops, I threw my bushings all over the place. Oh, I was sanding the wrong one too. What a dummy! See, <laughs> make sure you got the right stuff. All right, <laughs> sanding the wrong one. See, I grabbed the tiny one. There you go. Another mistake on camera, man. I'm just good at making mistakes on camera. You could see me make mistakes soldering too, man. So nobody's perfect. So I sure as hell don't know everything. Okay. Sanding the wrong tube, of course. What a dumbass. And we want to sand it, make sure that it goes through nice and easy like that. If it doesn't, you can get a file and file it down a little. But that's nice and easy right there. Okay. Got you, Dylan. Okay, so what we're going to do, like I said, we're going to pin this, right? We're going to pin the motor bracket, so we'll pin it right here. You could pin it anywhere that you want to pin it to. It's, you know, whatever your preference is, as long as you got it mainly all on the board. I'm going to do that. Let me move this over a little. Oops, that pin, I think, has just had it. Go up here a little bit. Should be good. Any questions so far? I know we've kind of getting ahead of ourselves here. Let me make sure that's straight. And I'll pin. Actually, the one thing I do do, excuse me, before you do that, and I know you may not have an old motor, but don't worry about it if you don't have a motor. Or you could use the motor that you purchase to do this and i'm going to tell you why but if for first that if you're first starting out you don't have the motor you can still do it without the motor if i could find a darn old motor that i have here that i use for soldering is this it here they are so all right so let me do this here guys sorry so this is a motor right here and just it's a good working motor it's just something that i use you know, and so this is a piranha motor. It's a good motor. Let me do this first. Excuse me, guys. I should have done this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount a motor on here. Okay. Uh, this is to create good alignment. And when you solder your axle tube, let me get screws for the motor. Actually, let me look over there. Right, give me a moment here. I'm sorry, guys. I didn't have to think of this part here. Make sure. Yeah. Let me use this one. Oops. All right. All right. Let me get some screws, some little motor screws, which are right here. I have to dig all my stuff up here. Oh, here's a magnet. Sticking everything nice. Here's my motor screws. have some more all right get my motor screws and what i'm going to do is <clears throat> i'm going to <clears throat> excuse me my throat here <clears throat> i'm going to it <laughs> not do that i'll do this and I'll put it through the hole like that what i want to do is mount the motor onto the bracket now, like I said, if you don't have a motor, don't worry about it. You could do it without it. But if you do, put it on there, and it'll help with alignment a little bit easier. It's just a, a method I do and that I was taught. Uh, do this here. Get that in there. Sometimes this could be tedious. Like I said, tedious. All right. This is the thing where you need to not get frustrated if you start doing this and things aren't going your way or you're having problems doing like things like this because it's um, 
Let me see if I can magnetize this screwdriver a little. Kind of help me out. And I did. So you can magnetize your screwdriver like that if you need to get these in if they're being stubborn. Magnet from an old slot car that you took out if you take your magnets out or do this to the motor to magnetize it a little. Because there's a magnet in here. Okay, now that we got this done, <laughs> forgot about that part. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to pin it again into place. All right. Then I'm going to pin the end bell right here like that. Let's see if I can see that. Okay, I'm going to pin the end bell and uh, just like that. And then I'm going to put some here just to keep it a little bit more steady. It's nice, nice, solid there, see? So it's all good. So you can see on these motor brackets how this is flush the motor with that bracket. That's why Slot Car Corner redesigned these because on the other ones, you would have to cut these down on the older ones. And I do have an older style one here somewhere. We use the one I was doing as an example on the last video. Where did you go? Fumbling around for everything now. All right. No, I can't find that. That's great. When I need it, you can't find stuff that you need. Usually what happens. Anyways, let's see if I get another motor bracket. Here's a new style. Come on. Oh, here we go. Hold on a second. That's why. Oh, and here's the other one. Oh, here. I'm being stupid now. <laughs> Okay, so here is an older style motor bracket, and here is a newer style. You can see this is let me get in position. This is cut down. If you can see right there, this is cut down, so it's flush with the motor. Before we would have to cut these because we'd want this flush with the motor. As you can see, it sits on the plate on the uh, board evenly with the motor with the bracket. And it was hard to cut these down with using a Dremel, and then you had to sand them, make sure they're nice. It took more time, but Slot Car Corner got us the uh, the easier way to do stuff. That's why the what I'm saying is the industry has helped us out, especially Slot Car Corner, with making things easier so you don't have to do that extra stuff. So, uh, Gladstone. <laughs> screws in on camera no, yeah no kidding sometimes it doesn't happen that way and then when they fall on the carpet you're like ah so here we go so we got this pinned and we got our tube and then we're going to slide it in here all right and then what i do is this is where the caliper part is important as well so i'm going to pin these here and i you do this measurement because i think it's important is to make sure they're kind of equal distance between here and here, at least close enough. It doesn't have to be perfect, but if you get it pretty close and pin it and lock it down, that's good. But you just want to make sure that you're getting, you know, equal distance between those two. And that's why I use these pins here and just like that. So I don't know if you guys could see where it's at right there. And I'll get my caliper and I'll do this. I'll get the edge of it. I got 5.13, and right here I have uh, just about, that's 5.13 actually. Or if you don't have a caliper, you could use this little ruler and see it in centimeters and do that. So that's like half a centimeter. And this is uh, almost half a centimeter. It's off a teeny bit. So, I mean, it's, you get it as close as you can get it. Don't, don't uh, overthink this and don't, you know, lose sleep or <laughs> sleep over it. You just get it as centered as you can, as close as you can. It doesn't have to be perfect, like I said. And then you just solder. There's this is the part where people get kind of intimidated on the soldering part. And this is the easy part doing this. So I'm gonna get my flux and I use acid flux. And I get my solder and I have 60 40 rosin. You don't have to use silver solder, don't use that. That's expensive, and you're not making a, a commercial track drag car because they use that stuff. And this is 60 40 rosin. This is 0 0.08 millimeter solder. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the iron on. Let me grab the iron. Okay, let me make some room here because I got kind of a mess going on here. That's what happens. You get tools all over the place. <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to turn my iron on. I have the Weller downstairs. This is a different one that I'm using. Uh, the Weller will be good enough for you to do this. This is one I got before I got a Weller uh, when I started making scratch build cards. This one right here, particular ones, this is the one they used to make. You know, those real, those chassis for like commercial racing. So I got some overkill that I didn't need. So Mitzi, come on. Oh, wait. So here we got our flux. And then what I'm going to do is if I can pull this off. Get this car out of the way. <clears throat> I want stuff getting on that. What I'm going to do is put some saw, uh, flux here like that. What I'm going to do is get my soldering iron. I usually put it on the iron. I mean, you can feed it if you want, but I prefer putting it on the iron, meaning feeding like doing this and then doing that. But I prefer to put it on the iron itself. So I'll get solder on this. Right. And then I'll also do this to kind of give me some insurance. Where's my rat tail file? See what I mean about everything disappearing. Here it is. So let me get that out of the way. I'll usually do this, hold this, hold this down, and then I'll go just like that. And I'll just leave heat. And you can see it go through the tube on the other side of the bracket and kind of come around here. Like that. And let it go. And it's gonna cool off. It'll change color. There you go. That's the first side there. Okay. And I'm going to do the next side right here, which is right here. And then I'm going to get the flux. Put it like that. And get some solder. I don't really have to hold it down, but I will. Some solder. And just like that. And put heat to it. And you can see it go all the way around and kind of get in there. So that's good. And let it go. That's it. There you go. Now this is going to be real hot. So don't touch it. Give it, you know, like two minutes or three. Because that, believe it or not, hot <laughs> brass transfers so easily. And stuff. Mitzi, out. So there we go. We got that. Now the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to put the bushings. Uh, and then I'm going to use the axle. I'm going to use the axle. I'll use a, an axle I've been using for soldering. If you use your new axles, that's fine. I'm just using this one. And what I'm going to do is, that should be cool, is I'm going to get the bushings. I'm going to fit them in here. Now, there's another way you could do this. So if you want, you can put a little solder inside here if you want and then scrape it so the bushing will fit. So this way when you heat it, it will kind of like, it will, you know, solder it a little bit better. But, I mean, if you don't have to, you can still solder it from the outside. Again, people have different methods. This is a method Harry showed me to do, but I'm not going to do that because I don't want to overcomplicate this. I'll let you experiment when you do it. So what I'm going to do is get the two bushings and put them in here and get my axle and put it in here. And the reason why I'm doing this is because this is going to help align these bushings to the uh, with the axle in it. I'm gonna pin it here, and pin it here, get a little snug. Nice movement there. I'm gonna leave the axle in there, okay? Right, and you could do this also if you don't want the axle to go back and forth, but I'm just doing this just to do it. All right, if you wanna do that, that's fine. You just wanna make sure these are on their flush you know, square, you don't want them teetered or anything or have a gap. And you can look at it all the way around to make sure, and that looks good right there. And what I'm going to do is get my flux. I'll put it on both sides, and I'll get my solder. A little bit more. And then I'll go right here on the bushing on the back of it. Go around it. Just like that. 
There you go. You got that bushing in there. Let me put a little. Cause I can hear a sizzle, so I'm gonna put. There you go. Yeah, it flowed better. It didn't flow that much. That's what this will do. If you don't feel like it's good enough, then you just add more flux. Because I usually like to hear it sizzle, and I know it's doing its job. <laughs> Again, this iron's dirty. Just clean it out, too, because it's getting a little black in color. Or you could use tip tinner if you want. And then I'm going to go to the other side here. And there's a sizzle that I like to hear. I ain't hearing the other one. I'll solder that. And there you go. There are your bushings. Your bushings are in with the axle in, so to make sure that the axles align, you know, with the bushings. That's why I do it with the axle. Then the motor, I put the motor in there so that it keeps this flush and kind of, you know, another thing, an alignment thing to keep everything properly aligned and squared. It's just a method I do. Now, if you don't have the motor, like I said, it's not the end of the world. You can still do it that way. This is just my way of doing it. Um, you know, I'm, again, I'm not trying to make it over complicated. I'm just trying to show you how simple it is so nobody gets over intimidated by something. So any questions on that so far? You could uh, throw anything out. So here we go. Tony Tibbetts, you're asking, where can I get the little flux bottle with the needle tip on it? Uh, Slot Car Corner has that. That's how I got that from Slot Car Corner. So, and I could send you a link to it here. Let me look. You want me to put a link for you there, Tony? Because I could do that. Hold on a second. Let me see. A car corner. It'll be under tools. I'm looking for you real quick. So give me a moment, guys, while I look up tools. Let me look up bottles real quick. That's a good question. Here we go. So they're called precision needle bottle, bottles. There's uh, half ounce or one ounce. I think the one I got is one ounce. A little bit of difference in scents. But uh, here. Let me put it into the stream here. There you go. That's where you can get it there, Tony. There's a link. Link for anything. Mark. Hello, sir. Any chance you could do a quick zoom on the axle and bushing? Yeah, here. I, I This camera is not, it's it's a webcam, but I could bring it up close for you there, man. There, you know, 4K cams are so much nicer. And that's it right there. Is that good enough for you, sir? Hey, what's up? No, you're not. It's okay. This I'm just showing them this. So. You're gonna are take you off on, to the. Are you online or? Are you yeah, that's all right. You're gonna take off to the store. No, I just was coming in. You said that, that there was mail for me. I was wondering where it was. No, I didn't say there was mail for you. Oh. No, no, I didn't go check. Sorry. You were a stool king. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> that was my lovely wife. She was just asking me a question. So yeah, okay, good. I'm not going anywhere yet. Okay, all right. So all right. Good, Mark. So you're able to see that. That's fine. So everybody understand this part. I hope I'm not going too fast for anybody. Uh, any questions on this? I'll bring it up so you can see it. You're looking at it from the side. Let me move this out of the way. All right. Here's one thing you do. After you do that, just move the axle back and forth. Make sure it moves in nice and easily. We'll get these out of the way. See how that goes back and forth nice, nice and smooth? No resistance. You're not going to have it like cock guide to where it's gonna it's gonna make the motor run hot because if you have any resistance it, it starts heating up the motor and you start having problems so just to ensure that's aligned and there you go see nice and easy and then when you put oil in that it'll be easier and this is a older axle so if i clean this up and that oil it'll, it'll go through nicely so there's that part on doing the first step uh, on this process so the next thing after doing this so you got everything done you know everything looks good so far so now it's putting the side rails now for the stinker chassis it's 8151 i think it is let me look yeah but this one's 8152 i'm going a little bit bigger which is fine this is 530 seconds and what i do is i cut this in half and i 
put these on the sides and in. It doesn't matter if it's protruding out here because you could always cut that down when you're done. So what I'll do is I'll take this out. And this is, should be uh, 12 inches, I believe. So we could get our ruler out. I'll get a ruler here. All right. And uh, uh, here we go. Go from the point here. So it's about 12 right there. I don't know if you can see it's 12. 12, 12. Turn the camera. Can you see that? <laughs> there you go, 12. So what I'll do is I'll cut this in half. And whatever excess you could save it for some other project or something like that. I, I mean, usually I'll just have pieces around just to practice. So we're going to put this here. Let's turn our iron off. Our iron will go off automatically. This one will. So we'll put this here. All right. And we'll get our side rails. Right, and we'll go six, which is half of 12. Get my, I'm going to have to clean up here a little bit because I got stuff all over. And we'll go six. All right. Now, how you could cut this, you could use uh, a Dremel. That's another tool you could have. Or Harbor Freight has these little mini saws. It's a little gray saw. It's under 40 bucks, and you could use that as a little bench saw, and you cut it. Uh, get extra blades because the blades will dull out after a while. So let me – there it goes. Oh, the ruler. Let me put this. Stuff is moving all over the place now. All right, there, darn it. All right. Everything's falling off. Thanks. All right, so let me clear up a little bit here because it's getting too too much stuff in the way. So let me put my tools out of the way. It's nice to keep everything kind of organized because it gets crowded here. I'm gonna put my triplets up there. There's another pin here. These are for another car. So I'll put all my parts right here just to get them out of the way. You know, my wheels and stuff. These are from that tie rope. Uh, put my ax other axle here. And uh, well, there's another pin here. I'll move this out of the way. I'll put these away that I don't need in the drawer. <clears throat> I'll keep my rat tail file and uh, other stuff there. <clears throat> All right. So I got... Everything a little bit cleared out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this. So this is a good tool to have. This is a battery-operated Dremel. Uh, and what you do is you're going to just cut it like so and just cut it down. I could do this on camera. So hold on a second because I don't want to spray crud all over the place. So I'll do this to cover it up and keep all the brass. This is just a rag that I have lying around. And I'm going to cut it right here. And here we go. It's a little tough with this one. And here's a... Make sure you wear safety glasses. I have my glasses on. Remember, it'll get hot, so if you need to let go of it, let go of it. There you go. That's it. You can just trim it down. All right. Trim it down like that, and then you're done. All your brass, little particle brasses are all right here on the towel. And then there'll be little pieces in here, like little... See, the it looks like it's got stuff in there, so that's where you get your rat tail file. Almost lost it. And you just kind of clean it out a little. Like so. Just clean it out. Should be cooled off already, so it should be fine. And we'll get our towel, get it out of the way, shake it over the little trash can I have here. And then make sure you vacuum up, you know, if you have animals and stuff, because you don't want them stepping on their paws. I usually clean up. Then I'll also get, like I said, I like a clean work area. With some simple green. Clean up my area. I'll just do this. Thank you, Chris, for telling everybody that. I appreciate that. Hit the like button. You know, I leave people. I leave that up to them if they want to hit it. So, so there we have it. There's your side rails. So we'll bring these over here, and this is where we're going to solder these right here. 
turn this this way. All right? So, see how they stick out here? Don't worry about it. I mean, it's no big deal. You can cut that off when you need to cut it off. So, what we'll do is we'll put our pins here. And then I'll put a pin in the back to keep it from moving backwards. So, I'm putting it, lining it up with the back of the bracket. <clears throat> and let me go right here. Come on. And I'll also do this. And I'll show you. All right. So I'll do that. Get them on there. So that's fine. Don't worry if this is like starting to bow in a little. We'll deal with that later. Um, and then what I'm looking for is to make sure that, as you can see, these are flat. See how those are flat there? I don't know if you see that. You want those flat, don't want them like cockeyed or like tilted because then that's not going to be good. You don't want to do that. So you want to make sure that they're flat as possible before you solder and keep an eye on that when you solder. <clears throat> Put a pin back here. <clears throat> okay, I got these in place. <clears throat> Excuse me. God, I keep clearing my throat. <laughs> and these are all flat. So what I'm going to do is turn the iron on. <clears throat> And get my uh, flux ready. Let me get my solder ready. Now, you can use paste flux, but paste flux doesn't really flow as nicely. I mean, I've tried it with paste flux. I prefer acid flux. But, uh, pay, you know, paste flux is good for just, to me, wires only and stuff like that. Board, circuit boards, if you're dealing with a chip. Now I have that full of flux. Now, I don't like how this looks kind of dirty. Looking kind of dirty. Clean it off a little. Make sure it's clean because you kind of have a problem soldering. Then what I'll do is you could do this, put it on here, and then just hit it and feed it, and then just let the heat get to everything. Like that. Okay. Got that part in there. I got this end right here. I just want to make sure it's going toward the back. Sometimes if I tilt this up, it may go back. That's what, maybe not, but there it goes. Now I'm seeing it flow to the back of the bracket. You got to be careful with one thing. Don't put so much heat and leave it on for a super long time because then you start desoldering what you did here. As long as you have heat and you see it flow, as you can see, this flowed to the back where I want it. Uh, let me see if you can see that. If you can see, oh, it's kind of hard to kind of put this on camera. But back here is where it flowed back, and you'll see it, and you check for that. And uh, you'll see that it flowed all the way back that way, and it did. And you make sure there's square on there that looks square, and then you go on to the next one and solder that piece. And then I'll put flux. And you can do this also if you want. Put a line back this way. Because this is all going to heat up and solder into everything. If you want to do it this way, you can also. So, I mean, there's different ways of doing it. There we go. Next, see, I could see it from my vantage. I could see it flowing through. Just like that. I can see the solder from here, and then you can see it flowing toward the back. That's what you look for. So that's hot. There's our solder there. I'm sorry I don't put too much light here, because what happens, I have these LED lights, and if I do that, they're going to create lines in the video. So that's why I kind of have a softer light here. But, of course, it's just an HD camera, another 4K camera. <laughs> but and there's that right there. So I'm going to... Let it cool and uh, just check your work. Make sure everything's flush. If you see that it isn't flush or it's picked up a little, and all you have to do is just put the iron on it, reheat it, and then you can push this down. Say this is popped up. If you get your file and then just reheat it like this, and then sometimes you'll hear it go snap, and it may just because it was just a little crooked, and then you could do that, and it will reset it. That's one thing about brass is that uh, – if 
if it doesn't come out right, you could always reheat it and then reposition it. Same thing with like guides. I mean, if guides ain't perfect, you could remove the position of the guide as well. So that's that part right there. That's everything there with the, you know, the, uh, which we'll call it the um, side rails. Now what we're going to do is we don't need those anymore. We're going to look at the front to back. So get your caliper and uh, do is zero it out, of course. And uh, you just get a measurement like back here. All right. You got 2.5.49, all right. And then you go here and just check it. And that, that's pretty good right there. And you could check it toward the back as well. You know, but it's the brackets there, obviously, but you can't do <laughs> that. But you could check right here, like right in front of the motor. You want it pretty much even all the way through. This bra this uh this right here will probably center everything up because it's probably the perfect fit, as you can see it fits in there. That's why I picked this guide tongue just to start with to make it simple for everybody so you can you can make your own guide tongue if you want and that's no big deal you can make it out of the channel which is the uh you can see 8264 kns make your own one or you can just use these tongues that are pre-stamped which are fine available in slot bar corner you can get these these are nice because <clears throat> you could weld your center axle you excuse me weld. you could solder your center axle right here if you want <clears throat> so but so you have your guide there, <clears throat> and what you want to do is when you place your car on here, you want to make sure, and I've done this mistake before, so just let you know. So now you can see how that guide tongue's sticking out. So you don't want it to stick out of the car necessarily. You want to be tucked in under the car. So if you do that, and you can see from here if it's tucked in right there, right, and you want it tucked in, and depending on the size of the guide you use, I'll probably go back more. You want to make sure that that's, that guide is not in the way of the bumper or the front of the car. You're going to have an issue. So you could use a slotting plus deep wood guide if you're doing it for a wood track or use a, a commercial guide, which are those other ones that you see in commercial cars like you saw in the ones that I showed you earlier. And you want to make sure that these are inside of the car, as you can see. This would be right about there. If that's enough clearance, what you could do is just take this out. You could kind of flip it over. Oh, it's still warm, too. <laughs> and uh, kind of get a visualization by doing it like this. Right? So obviously, that's too far. And then you could go back to about here. Right? And you could see that it's, you know, it's if there's the rear wheels issue, that's where the guide will be. And I will pull it in a little bit more because that gets low right there. So I push it back more. And you have to kind of like make sure that it's you'll have clearance for the you, know, just it, you have clearance for the for the you know the guide as well. So that's one thing you want to check. And again, if you make a mistake and it doesn't come out the way you want it, then you could take heat to it and then move the guide back more. So let me move it back to here. And I'm going to go like this. And that should be enough room. That's about <clears throat> centimeters. So the front of the car is right here. Right. And your guide is right there. So about a centimeter and a half, a little bit over a centimeter and a half. And that should be good right there for you know the guide to clear now again depending on the guide you use if you use uh, let me dig in here again look for guides so here are my guides here so if you use a commercial track guide you know just kind of get an idea that's where it would probably sit and you look in here and that would probably be an issue which i can't tell so I probably would move it back a little bit more. I want to make sure that this is not going to interfere with anything. 
And also your front, you know, axle will go close over this as well. But uh, you kind of just get a visual idea where it needs to go. And then you have, of course, these. These are not made for this tongue, but they stick out more, obviously. But the one thing, good thing about these guys is that they have these slats, and you could chop them off. And this was kind of cool about the uh, slotting plus guides, which I've used before. <clears throat> you just need a little bit more work to make a, a tongue for it, which is possible. It's not, not too hard to do. You can make it out of tubing and stuff, out of brass tubing and to make it fit. Because this, it has very little clearance between this uh, piece here that sticks up to put the screw in and between here to where something would have to swing, you know which is that small space right there. <laughs> but I usually would go with this for now for this car. And uh, I think I have, so here's the half a guy and cheese. I could do that. So here's an idea like, you know, where it would sit based on where your car is at. And it looks like it would probably just make it. Just put it right there. So I probably would just make it. I'll probably scoot it back. I get little, sometimes I make this mistake on a few cars and I'm like shoot it sticks out a little I'm like oh well it'll live but you kind of really want to keep it in the car in the center you know inside the car so actually that should be good right there that should be fine right there where it's at and that's where you would start soldering this piece and if it isn't you could always move it up forward if you need to again it's not the end of the world so I'll pin this right here oh, two pins is enough and then what I'm going to do is put flux there all right and then i'll flip it over and then we can see what it looks like and if it isn't right then you can just pull it back out more and just reposition it so i'll put flux here now this is flat um so let's see all right so this is another thing that we do right here so i'll get my solder put my irons on ready to go what i'll do is i'll Kind of put it here, you know, kind of go along here. Wait till it gets hot. You gotta wait till the brass gets hot. Just kind of run it along here. See how it's getting nice. Nice, nice. Like that. And just keep nice flow. Like that. There you go one side i hope you can see that that's kind of shining a lot on there isn't it let me know if the light's too much sometimes that light's too bright okay so then we got it all soldered like that see and then do the other side duplicate the other side all right flux and then we're going to do the same thing with this side all right That. There you go. There's that right there. Got that side done. Uh, it's hot. Don't touch it. <laughs> Don't touch it, kids. Um, so we're good there. We're good, good, good there. It should be fine. And you know, I didn't see this, but yeah, we're okay there. All right. So now we have the tongue guide, you know, on there, all ready to go. And uh, it's all set in there. So we'll let it cool off. Any questions so far on anything? I don't know if anybody has got any questions. But um, we're at, this is at the point we're at right now. And again, don't worry about these because you can cut these down once you chop them off here. And you could save these pieces for some other project or something else if you get into like uh, doing uh, mod builds, modified chassis and stuff like that. Or for other things, practice. <laughs> Now I'll do some, it's probably cooled off. We'll pick this up, stick into that, and there you go. Looks nice and flush on that side. And you see the solder went through. You can see how the solder went through on the other side, and it did its job. Now we'll get the car, and we'll see what we've done, if we've done it correctly. And here we go. And that's pretty good right there.
if I put it in there, there's one right here to simulate it, All right? As a guide. And that should be fine. Well, the clearance right there. Tucked inside the car, not too close to there. It should be fine. Shouldn't have an issue. I move the wheels up a little alone. So by about there. That should be good. Should be pretty, pretty tucked in there and hidden away and look real good when he goes down the track. So that's a good spot where he did it. I wanted it further up, and I think it would have been rubbing on something, which sometimes that happens to me, and I do that. Make mistakes like that <laughs> quite a bit sometimes, and I'm like, ah, crap. Why did I put it there? Now, if I could position this back where it was going to go. Nope. All right. Come on, come on, come on, come on. If you have to repin some, where the hell did this one come from? All right, here we go. I'll just take these out and just make it easier for me because I know it's already soldered. Yeah, what do they do? Anyways, just repin it. If you need to repin it because you know, make mistakes. Now, this piece right here, I know you notice it's solid. That'll be the last thing you cut when you uh, get everything together on the chassis. So we got pretty flush there, and you could check it if it's flush with uh, the tech tool. Uh, this is a 124th one or 125th one. Tech block. You can check it like that and make sure it's flush. All right. It's nice and flush. So I think it looks good on the side. All right. So you know it's pretty flush. If you know it's crooked, then you can put it back on here like it said, it's not the end of the world. And there's my solder iron saying it's shutting off. Let me turn it off. And then you could just, you know, refix it by just heating it up and you know, repositioning it. It's it's not a big deal. It's it's something pretty simple to do. It's not uh it's not like you know you're stuck and you can't do anything and you gotta throw the whole thing away. That's not how that works. Brass is nice to manipulate, it's really easy and it's not too hard to do. Okay, so now that we have that on there, uh, we could do our front axle. And our front axle is going to be important. And this is another important thing, too. So the height of the car uh, when you're starting to solder stuff. So what I'll usually do is I'll put the rear wheels on. Because you don't want that to be, and uh, you know, I may make a mistake right here showing it too. It happens. Oh, I can't find my other wheel. See, that's what happens when things get moved around. Oh, I don't know what happened to it. No, it's, oh, duh. I got the axle right there. Jeez. Okay, so we'll, <laughs> we'll put this on here. I'm being a dummy. A big dummy. Now, if you get this on here, you see how that's kind of like rubbing that. Don't worry about that because you're going to shave all that off. You could get a razor and cut that down. See, because I know it's it's going to be hitting it, and then that'll take care of that. Or if you need to put a shim there, that's fine also. Because this part will have to be sanded off, you know, cut off or filed off. Or if you, you know, get it sanded off, it's fine. See, it's again where the tire truer does help. And, uh, or you could put a little spacer, and it's fine. Even if it's, like I said, in the car where we had it, if it's sticking out a little, it's fine. It still looks pretty good. So, and then we'll just put these on for now because I know they're not on there perfectly. So you can see that right there. That's how much space you have right there. But when you cut those down and you get it flush with this, you're not going to have to worry about the tire rubbing like that. It's just part of just, you know, getting things together. Let me get my tool if I can find it, which is over here. And I will tighten this up. <laughs> that to see Chris Holmes is saying, can you make a guide for the old classic GB and stay with the modern? Yeah, sure. I would say you could fabricate one. I don't see why not. And then the stock guide is minuscule. <laughs> I just heard you say you made the guide. Yeah, I made a guide tongue is what I made. So, um, gosh, I don't know if I have a car here. The one that I made, I left it at Harry's track because it was my first card I built. 
Uh, so you make it out of, let me see if I can find a piece of brass that I did it, that I have lying around in the drawer there. Let me get this tire on first. Sorry. Let me get all these out of the way too, because I don't need these right now. These pins, so. Right. I use one. All right, so I got the tires on there. Uh, let me get the front axle. Got the tires on it. I got these, and these are going to be a little bit wide. They're going to be a little bit too wide, too. So, so I'm going to do this because those are, see, they're, they're hitting the, the frame here, but those will be cut down. So, when I true these and take all this off, it's not going to be an issue. Uh, and again, like I said, I know you guys don't have truers, and I, I feel bad in <laughs> mentioning a truer. So, this is where kind of like you get the height of the car. Oh, shit. See what I'm saying? Because you can't have it slam like that because in this guide, once the guide goes in there and everything, this is going to have to be up. So where the guide will be taking the space there. So uh, let me see about the – let me go back to the question that was asked. Where are you? I don't know if I have it here. Let me see. I think I have it. Here it is. I'll show you what I've kind of done here to kind of explain that other one. Yeah, here it is. So you can make a guide out of this channel. I used a popsicle stick as kind of like a template too. And uh, let me get one of those guides again, the slotting plus guides to kind of explain. And there's a tube size for it as well. You can make it... Um, I don't know if it's 8129. Maybe I have it in the drawer here before I pull you up. Hold on a second. Oh, is that it? it Looks like it. I'm sorry, I'm taking a little time doing this. Let me see if this is it. I got to clean this up. Okay. So here's this is this tube is 8129. Now how I where is it at? Here's an example of what I mean. This is a popsicle stick. This is kind of what I make a guide out of, but you see how there's not much clearance if you because it's it doesn't give you much room to turn there. So you had to kind of like let me see, where's the other one I had in the bag? Oh boy. I lose track of everything here. Uh, I don't have a car. I'm trying to think of a car that I have that I did that with. Uh, so let me let me go with this then. So, so for example, there's a, I use this as a centering to center it up when I'm doing. So you would you can see this. So you would cut it like here, right? Get it close, and then you would have to round it off so that this will swivel inside of here. That's how you can make a tongue guide out of these. And this channel is 8264. And this is uh, 1 8 I believe this is this, 1 8 channel uh, brass piece. And then what you do is you cut it down like say here. And if it doesn't fit in there, rotate, you'd have to cut it in an angle and then kind of trim it down with a file and make it round. And it gets a little closer when you do it. And you just want to make sure it swivels inside of there. I'm trying to think of a car I have that has that uh, on there. And I can't think of anything right now at the moment. But that's what I'm talking about when you're, you know, how you do that guide. Yeah. Uh, let me read the other question here. Sorry. <laughs> so, uh Hello, snowy Thursday. Hey, the fingers, how you doing, man? And Jeff, great vid. I haven't done scratch film since the late sixties. You're getting me going, restarting the building. Cool. Glad to hear that. Glasgow Ganner, Jeff F, another old timer. <laughs> Guide tongue, how clever. Yeah, it's it's just you know I've learned this from Harry. So you guys got to look at Harry's videos too. Uh, Harry's got some great videos. The stinker chassis. He explains how you do this and how you cut one of these. That's why I recommend you guys. That's how I learned how to do this. Was the stinker chassis builds. 
and I'll put a link in there too, so you could so every every one of you guys could check it out. But that's how you do these uh, slotting ones. They're a little bit tougher, as you can see. If I had the hole there, I would have to trim here and round it so that this will swivel and not bind in here. And it's it's possible to do it. It just takes more time. And then there's other ways, like if you do this piece, which this is 89, 8129, like a channel like this, see? There's different ways to do guide tongues, and you can do them yourself out of brass pieces. So say if I uh, put this piece on here, uh, shoot, right? Then you could use um, this as a guide tongue too and have a, you know, mount it somewhere to where this won't, you know, this will swivel. You know, so you would have it through a channel here and you have it like that and then you could do that. Or there's other ways of doing it. I just don't do it as often because I'm kind of, I have to admit, I'm kind of lazy and use the commercial guide saw because I'll tell you guys that. But this is the 8929 that fits in this channel here. And there's ways to make your own guide. That's just getting more advanced and stuff. But you guys, I'm just trying to show you just the basic stuff here. That's why I didn't really get into it. But, yeah, you can. That was a question that was uh, asked by, uh, by uh, excuse me, let me see, by uh, who said the minuscule. I got to look at the notes here. Uh, by uh, Chris there when he talked about the, you know, career guide and stuff. So, anyways, that's that right there i hope i didn't uh take too much time getting into that but that's one way of dealing with that if you uh you know need to think about making your own guide you know, just one way of doing it i don't know what i did with all that stuff here it is but see and then i drop everything and i don't know where it went i'll put that in here and this in here <laughs> And I don't know what I did in a little bag. Gosh darn it. See, this is why parts go away and then I don't know where they go away. So I'll leave that off to the side. Anyways, I'll probably find it during this. So getting back to this, so what I'll do is I'll get uh it's starting to get messy here. I'll get the car and put it on a block. This is another good thing to have is a tech block. And uh I'll get the guide again that I had. What the heck I do with it? There's your guide. There's one of these. And then I'll get this right here and I'll put it in the block slot like so. Right? And then I'll kind of, if you could see that, I see I got my, getting my height of the car. Because you want the guide, if you have the guide tongue too low, like slam, then you're going to have the axles lift up. If you do it, you know, soon, like you do it on the block, and then these are going to be way up in the air, and then they're not going to be touching the surface of the track, which you do want these to touch the surface of the track, and then you shim the, the uh, no problem, Chris, and then you shim the uh, the uh, the guide the guide itself because you put shims underneath it. So if you uh, kind of like get an idea where you need to go is what you're doing. So if I want to do it here. And I could do it like that and so forth. And then you could get your car also and make sure you're getting it in the position you want to, like on the car where the front wheel should be. So just like that. And it's hard to see. Like the, there you go. Like if you could see that, I'm going to hold it. I'm going to put it, you know, in a good spot. And then you have to make sure you get them pretty squared on there, you know, measure up. From a distance from the back of the wheel to the front. So let's say it would be there. So you want to make sure that this is straight and not like leaning forward and this leaning back. So you you measure from here to like say you measure from here to the uh, to a point in the frame like where you mark it and make sure they're equal distance. Or you could do this and put these. See now it's coming off. You could get this and position it on the block and then you can measure the the wheelbase say you want uh, the wheelbase should be what say eight right it needs to be eight so if you can measure this end right it's eight and then this way as well and make sure it's eight on the same side so that's how you get your wheelbase to make sure it's it's on their square so i doing this on camera takes more time so i'm just not really going to do it but i'm just showing you what you need to do to make sure you get this, you know, correct. And then you could get 
Let's see. So you leave it, leave a little gap here in between so that if you need to shim it more, you can shim it up higher. If you need to get the wheels off the ground a little bit so they barely touch, but you want the wheels to be touching the block. And then what you do is you make a bracket here to hold this on. And uh, <clears throat> let me get this out of the way. It's kind of like a, a guessing game. So that's why, here we go. So that's why I did that. It's because I know I did a piece. Uh, and I'm trying to remember because it's been a little bit since I've done the scratch build because I've been busy with moving. And I, after a while, you can tend to forget. <laughs> I know that I've used uh, these as a spacer. I'm trying to think what I used last time. So if you want to space this out from the height, you can use a popsicle stick. Popsicle sticks are what I was using. And so I see a popsicle stick. You can put it underneath the car if you want to hold it up. Right? So you want to do that. See, that's too much of a rake there. So I wouldn't use that. Um, I would have to use another one. You see, get another popsicle stick. I'm trying to remember what the hell I did last time. I know I did something. I think it was something else I used. It wasn't two popsicle sticks, but because that'll be kind of high. And then you have to kind of see and then see that's a little high, as you can see in the front. Yeah, not too bad. But the deal is you want to make sure you get the, the height right. And I'm trying to remember what I did last time. but And I had it in these little drawers, and I can't remember what I used. You could use a piece of brass, too, if you think a piece of brass will be the perfect size as well. Like this is a thin piece here compared to this popsicle stick. And you could shim it up with brass. You just want to get the right height correct. You know, you don't want it too low to where this guy telling if it's too low, then you solder the tires and then you have to shim it. And then what it's going to do, it's going to lift because it's soldered in place. It's going to lift the front wheels off and then it's going to, it's not going to work right. So it's kind of a little bit of a, little bit of a, you know, critical area, maybe a little bit more uh, requirement, paying attention to stuff. I'm trying to remember what I use and I'm looking for something that... I had here that I did use, and I had them in drawers, but when I moved, everything kind of got scrambled. Like I said, you could lose track of things easily. And there's that piece. Okay, so let me put, oh, great. Put that there, that there. Let, give me a second, I'm trying to look in the drawers. What the heck is it I used? Well, I cannot remember, but anyways. Um, a sec here. So let's say we use a popsicle stick for the hell of it. Okay. So we put a popsicle stick here, right? And then say we could put another piece of brass right here. And you could pin all this when you're got it all said and done. So let's pin this. Okay. I'm going to pin all this because this is all moving around too much. I'm going to put it right here, pin that, pin this so to keep this from moving back and forth more center of the camera uh yeah thank you tony for posting harry's video there that's an if that's the stinker chassis video that's an excellent video i highly recommend all of you look at that and then watch this video again and you kind of get more of an understanding how the different styles of people will do things differently and that's what it is it's just everybody's method and harry always says that in his videos i mean you know I'm not saying this is the right way. It's just it's my way of doing stuff, and that's what I'm saying here. I'm not saying I'm a freaking super racer and I know everything. This is just the way I do stuff. And somebody may have an easier way of doing this, which I'm sure they do. There's guys out there that you know are more, more experienced than I am, that they have a better method of doing it. But I'm just showing you what I do. But if you find something easier that works great, then by all means do that. If that works for you, that then tell me about it. If you can find an easier way, I'm always up to listening in for that. So now I put a popsicle stick and two pieces of brass. This is a 
some pieces of brass, which are 8236. So they're uh, 20, half inch wide and 25 thousandths inch thick. So I got like 50 thousandths and then the popsicle stick, I guess, is another 50 thousandths. So you're going to see how I'm kind of like setting my height right there. See, that looks pretty, pretty good right there. And then what I could do is I could, let me straighten this out because this looks crooked. I just want to make it straight. Excuse my head here in the way. <laughs> I'm looking down on it. Make sure this is all looking uh, down this line at least. Make it somewhat straight. Otherwise, you kind of start uh, worrying if it's true. All right. So we got this here, here, here. All right. Another thing you could do too is if you want, you could pin the wheels too, like here, behind in front of here to keep it from moving too. This really holds them in as well. Like that. Like that. And like that. Right? Okay. So now it's not going to move anywhere. So that's body height looks pretty good there. And I'm going to put my front wheels here here the uh, in the wheel they should be and then I'll put it on now it looks a little high now because I got pins there so that's why it looks kind of weird but uh let me see if I can remove the pins to help me out that pins are doing that well it's just the frame of the car Okay, that's why, because this the rails are like going in the front of the body. You know, if we didn't have the rails, we had them cut off, then they would go over it. So, what we could do is we could trim those down. So let me trim them down for the hell of it for this build. So let me see. Let me let me just cut off a certain section off. So let me cut off, and I'm not gonna really like do any measurements on this i'm just gonna chop it off so let me get this out of the way so let me get my green little rag keep all the shavings kind of contained going all over the place so let me get my rag here and i'm gonna cut i'll see right here Sometimes that'll happen. You got to be careful with that. <laughs> One thing, if it starts getting too hot, stop. Because you don't want to desolder all this, which it can happen. I'm going at an angle now because I can't get to the which is fine because I can always trim it down. Okay, I got this cut off right here. And I'm going to fold these pieces up and just put it on the carpet down here for now. Okay, now I'm going to put this back on here. Uh, like I had it, I can remember. All right. Okay, I'm gonna take this pin out right there and kind of make it a little easier on myself. All right, so now I have this cut down. I could put this over now. It'll go over the the rail, see like that. So there goes everything just fell out. <laughs> so. Let me uh, get these back on here. All right. And get the front wheels on. All right. Now I'm going to put it on the body on. So now the body fits on it a little bit better because we got rid of those rails. So about there. <laughs> and then you fall out. So you see what I mean? So... I think at this height, where I have kind of like spaced it right here is pretty much probably what I'm going to go with and uh, try that out and try this again. Get it to everything out of the way. All right. 
Yeah, no, I think it's I can't. Problem is I can't hold on to those pieces of brass because they come out. But let me see if I could pin those. Hey, it takes a little time when you do this. I mean, it's not. You gotta take have patience and all this stuff. It's not something that happens over you know overnight. Or it may happen overnight if you get lucky, you know, and everything goes well. But sometimes you run into difficulties. And that's where you need to not get frustrated about this stuff and then go crap. It's you know one of those deals. You just gotta have patience. I'll do that. See if I can hold those pieces in there. And again, I'll see the hold. So there you go, kind of like center, not like that. And the body height looks. It looks pretty good. It looks not bad because when you actually start putting body mounts is when you start, you know, dictating your height of the body or where it should be. I know you can't see that. But that right there looks pretty – the right height would look pretty good, I think, in that position. You know, if I could see. And then, again, you could check it because these wheels are – you're going to have to true them down too. you got to remember. So if I see it. It looks pretty good from where I could see at this angle from myself. And I think I'll just go with that. And then you'll solder your front axle in. And you're going to solder your axle in in the position. So if you put the car on here and you get it where you need to go, what I do is put pins here, right, for the tires on each side. Hope I don't get in the way there with my head. Yeah, just like that, right? hold those in place and pull that off All right and then uh, what you'll do is you could also do this so behind the wheel and in front of the wheel secure this so they don't move and then if you need to reposition them because they're one's too further than the other and then you could just take these pins out but you put those there put this one here this one here, if we could go in here. Okay, so you got it there. And this is where you could do your your wheelbase width. So say this is seven. Oh, geez, seven, almost eight, like a centimeter shy of eight, right? Go across here and then do the same measure. This one's at eight. So this one's a little bit further going that way. So you look at it. Let me turn it this way. So one of the wheels is kind of pitching out that way. You could also get your caliper. If you want to use your caliper. I prefer caliper. This way you can kind of get a better idea because you could do this. And then just go. One thing I didn't do is use longer axles on this, which I wish I would have. Because then you, when these stick out like this, you could kind of get a better idea of grabbing the measurement off it. So, plus it's always good to have more. <laughs> just in case. And then say this is 7992. 7991. Need a little... And then you can get this. Oh, shoot, let me move that up. That pin is in the way, so we can get that pin out of the way. And then this is 799. Well, it's almost there, not quite. Maybe this is a little bit wider. And then that's where you could kind of like move it in a little. So you could pin it against it to push the wheel. To give it pressure to put it in the position you want it and then you could get this and measure here and it's still actually short so we pushed it in too far push it out a little i think i could push it out a little with the pin here pressure on the wheel to push it out more hold it and go back again Uh, it's moving darn you. Come on, stay still. And it's still a little bit 
short now, so I'll go this side. Measure again. See the sides a little bit better. It all takes time with this part. You kind of want to get it, you know, best you can. So now I'll just have to move these out again. All right there. I'll do that. Ah, that's too far. You can tell. See how that's sticking. This one's sticking out too much. So I went too much. So then I'll go back. That was really sticking. So let me go back like that. Like that. That's pretty good right there. Uh, that's pretty good right there. That's pretty good right there. So you, you get it as close as you can. I mean, it doesn't have to be super perfect as long as you get it fairly close to where you need it. If it's off like one little, don't don't trip off it. No reason to get you know weird about it. Then put your body on and see where they're at. See, now you can see that. Now those are too far back. See, they're hitting the well. So now I know I need to go forward. So I'll have to redo the measurement between the two. So I since that's sitting back too far, we're going to move this up just a little. And this one too. It's all a little, you know, balancing act when you do this stuff. And you just got to, you know, take the time to get it done. And there we go. So we're going to move that back up and then we'll remeasure. See, those were too far, far back. That's actually pretty good right there. That one looks pretty good right there. So now we'll measure our wheelbase stuff. As you can see, this is coming out now. Great. Again, it takes a little time to do all this. It's not instantaneously. Oh, let me do that stupid thing. There you go. The other thing you do with these two is just stick them together with like some glue temporarily too. Or I could even solder these two if I wanted to. If you could solder these together and then just make it one piece. There we go. So now I'll remeasure again the wheelbase. That's right there. Seven nine nine one. Back here. Do these ones. That's actually pretty good right there. It's not bad. I'm pretty content with that. I'll just look at the car, you know, and you kind of get also an eyeball, see if it looks crooked to you. What do you guys think? I think I got it straight, or you think it's a little crooked? <laughs> but... So now that I have my height set here with these, you know, pieces of brass and this popsicle stick. This is how I did it last time that I remember. And uh, just got to hold everything together. <laughs> and uh, do that there. And this right here for now. Yeah, put it. All right. So now it's where I want my axle. I'm going to say right there. Um, so now to make a piece. You could do different ways of doing that. Uh, you could do it with, uh, you know, a piece like this. Just a smaller one. Say if this fits underneath there, and it's so it's too high. But sometimes you'll get some that'll be the perfect height, and then you can just solder that on. Or you can make like a little U bracket. And how you make a U bracket is with uh, a solid piece of brass. So let me look here. For some pieces, I may have some scraps here, or maybe not. Here we go. Here's one right here. Oh no, that's a tube. Ah, darn it! Darn it! Not solid piece. I struck out there. Oh, square pieces. Mm. Let me see. 
Well, here's an example of what I mean. Here's one I made for something, but I didn't use it. I don't think it'll fit on this car. But here's like, like that, see? Solid brass where you could bend it. But this is too wide, see? So it wouldn't fit there. So I need to make one shorter. So let me get a piece of solid brass, which I do have. I just don't have any scraps. Uh, it should be... Excuse me here, I'm going to get off camera. Is this it? Nope. Is this it? This looks like it. it. All right, here we go. I hope that's it. I'm pulling this out for no reason. All right. Okay, here we go. Here's a solid piece of brass. So this is 1161. Any questions so far? I know I've been going through a lot. <laughs> Try and get this part done. Oh. So, anyways. Uh, so, say, uh, let's see. Let's measure this. Let's measure this. It's getting a little messy over here still. So, let's say uh, two and a half centimeters or two centimeters. So. I want the inside to be two centimeters. So let's go uh, three centimeters. So this way I could bend these out. So I'll get this and mark this. I'll have to cut it. This you can't use tubing cutter. You have to use a Dremel. But it'll be easier to cut this. So we'll go three centimeters, right? I said three. Three. We have a three. Where's my marker? Here it is. Three. All right, we'll go three. Three it is. All right. All right, I'm going to cover every... Oh, I'm going to do down here because I think I might brag already all full of stuff. I do down here off camera. All I'm doing is cutting a piece of brass, not anything fancy. short we'll have to see all right throw that off the side all right there's three all right okay and what you can do is so i use big 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 boogers to do this i don't use tiny ones and i get my other ones big bama jammas I'm kind of doing this by eyeball, right? Wait a second. See, like that, and I'm going to bend it. I'm going to bend the other side. If I could do that, that's going to be tough. Give me a sec here, guys. I'm trying to figure this out. Okay. I don't think that's going to work. I should have done it this way. All right. So we'll pass on doing that because we'll do it this way. So I think it'll be easier if we get a whole piece, right, and then do it this way. So I'll go in as far as into the teeth there to the end of this here. What I'm going to do is make a 90. And the 90 like that, right? What I should have done was use cutters instead of that piece right there. So I'm going to cut this long. Okay. That's why we, these are better than using the Dremel. I just showed you that. I shouldn't have even used the Dremel on that. These cutters are really good to have. They're really, really, really good. I would highly recommend them. So there's our bend. So say... All right, we'll get that in there. Let me move these out of the way temporarily so you can see everything. Uh, let me clean up here too. Hold on a second. Let me clean up that brass that's on there. So make a mess. All right, clean all that up. Need that there. 
All right, here we go. So say we got our bend here. So we'll want to bend. We'll mark where we want to bend at here. Lights too much there. Hope that light ain't bugging you guys so much. So say we'll want to cut, or excuse me, cut. We we'll want to bend right here. So we'll mark right here. We're just, I'm just eyeballing it right now. I'm not doing anything fancy with measurements. So I'm going to bend right there, right? This way I could solder it onto this flat piece. And I will grab. The big pliers, like I did before. I'll kind of do this. See, bend it like that with my hand. Yeah, I did that. There you go. Here's you. I'll make sure they're even, though. You know, meaning even that flush with each other. You know, and that they're not like. One side ain't popping up in the other, so you can just bend it around a little with your hand. This stuff's pretty, not real hard to bend, so that's pretty flush right there. Then I'll cut this, or I'll, let me put it on first here, and then I'll see where I need to cut it. You see how I made this right here? So now I could cut this down the same size because it's pretty, pretty good spot right there. All right, here we go. I've cut this down. Now you see I've got this in here now. Now here's your, your bracket to hold your axle up. And you could do is you could solder right here and then solder on the ends here. And then that's your your height that'll hold the axle at that height. So we'll just go ahead and do it like that. I know we're kind of kind of uh, moving along here. Let me see. I like to make sure these are flush. So if I could hammer it down a little. You know, I also have this vise over here, and you can't see it. I have a vise here. Let me see if this is flush. All right. All right. There. Okay, so then what you could do is you could solder right here, right? And you could always trim this down if you think it's sticking up too much, you know, those little ends that were cut. Or I could do it right now so I could get my Dremel, right? And I could just... Pull those ends down. Or you could do it with sandpaper. I mean, those kind of flush. Sandpaper. Like that. Uh, it looks a little better. And I'm going to make sure I have my shims there and that they didn't move away. They're still underneath that guide tongue right here. And then I'm going to solder this in place. Um, so I'm going to hope that <laughs> and I hope that this wheelbase is good where it needs to be. I, I'm pretty sure it is. I know it looks crooked on the block, but uh, the way the car is positioned. So let's see. I'm going to check. Real quick here, just for my, you know, preference. One second here. I need to mark this because it's hard to see that. Let me see here. Gosh darn it. I used a caliper, but I'm going to use this to see where we're at. That's eight. I don't need to mark it now. I know what I did there. So that, that's good where it's at. That's fine. So I'm comfortable with that. I just remeasured it and checked twice, check three times, make sure it's good. And again, if it's not right, you can't always reheat this and reposition it. It's not like, you know, oh crap, you know, I can't do anything now. No, you, it's not, it's not over. 
you could still manipulate the brass and you know heat it up and do what you need to do so i'm going to put this here right and i'm gonna again get my soldering iron ready anybody have any questions so far i know everybody's been quiet <laughs> what i'm gonna do is uh solder here uh, i'm gonna try and hold that on if i can sometimes it's tough to do that yeah, it's my irons ready to go I'm get my solder ready to go so i'm not sitting here fumbling around i'm gonna get my flux like that okay here we go I'm going to hold this. Ah, see? See what I mean about this being nasty? I didn't clean it. So now I'm not getting anything soldering. So that's my fault. Now you can see why you need to clean these. I'm going to reposition this because that looks nasty right there. It's a little black shit. Yeah, that's no good. No bueno. Let me clean this up. That's what I mean. You got to keep things clean. If they're not clean, then they're not going to come out right. Let me clean that up. Okay. Let's go back to it now. Back at it. So now we cleaned it up and I cleaned my iron. My iron looked terrible. All right, now we're going to put flux on it again. We're going to get our solder ready. I got this to hold on. It's not going to look centered. Right there. All right, I'm going to get this. Ah. It's got a little balancing act here sometimes. Yeah. I'm just gonna work with it. Okay, we got it on right there. That looks pretty good. Right, I'm gonna gonna put more flux here. I'm gonna solder some more. I'm going to use this to hold it. Now I got it in the position where it's holding. You see where it'll flow underneath it? There you go. That's it. There's that. Oh, fast race. Nice work. It will be going around the track. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> So there it is. You got that all soldered in, and now we're going to solder the tube to the to the bracket there. That looks decently straight. It's it's fine. Again, don't I you know don't be overcritical with yourself if you think it's not good enough. I'm sure it's just fine. You just gotta go with it. So then we'll get more, and we'll put it right here. Solder on the tube around this little end here, like that. I'll get some more right there. And then we'll hit this right here. Like that. Careful you don't go melt your tire. <laughs> Got close to the tire. There you go. There's that piece right there. So there you go. It's, I don't know if you could see that. Like that. Oh, there you go the pieces we don't need anymore. Those are the little shims we were using for shimming it. Okay. There it is. There you go. Well, that's the car right there. And let's see how it looks on the block. And uh, this doesn't look too shabby. Looks pretty. I know you I'm get in position, you can see better. See, like that? It's because we have our guide tongue high now, because we want to make sure we could fit our guide flag in there. You know, so. Again, when you true these wheels down, 
or these tires down, it's going to lower it down a little. Same with the back. And then now we got one standard size shim would be fine in that. And you got to remember, you have the braids too. So if you have the braids, the braids are going to take up room too. So you may just have it where you need it right there. And if it comes to the point where this is too high, you could actually push this down a little and bend it if you think it's too high. And I've done that before. I think that'll be fine even with the braids in there. That should be good. See, now you got to compensate for the braids. See, so yeah, you'd have that gap there like that. So let's get some braids on there and check. So I think I have one that has braids on it already. You know, I made one that way permanently. So, but let me get some braids. Where are you, braids? Okay, I got two braids here. All right. We're going to get that guide. Yeah. Put them in there. Put them in there. I'm going to pull these down. All right. Get this here. There we go. That's with our braids in there. See what I mean? There's still a, there's still room to put a shim in there if you need to. And there's room to drop down if you don't need a shim after you treat these down a little. So that's what I'm talking about. That's important on the height, the front axle height. Because if this was too high, uh, the axle was too high, then you these wouldn't be able to touch the surface. You want these to barely be touching. You know, and then the guide tongue, if it was too high, then <laughs> it's you gotta kind of get them kind of balanced out there, but that's good right there. So that's why you really check that and put like those shims like I did to set the height of your guide tongue where it, you know, should be where, where the axle should be, the height of the axle should be. So this way you can lift the, ch the chassis off the, off the uh, surface of the track or so forth like that. So that's basically that right there. <clears throat> put our car on it. And uh, voila, there you go. <clears throat> that's that's it. This is a nice looking car too. And you could check, you know, the the uh, front, and it looks pretty good in the front, man. Right? That's pretty chat, pretty cool, pretty cool. There's the front. Here's the rear. Mark, what are you asking? I was not here at the start of the motor you're using. Uh, the motor is just a, a motor for for making sure everything's aligned. It's just a practice that Harry kind of showed me to do. So when I soldered it, this is just a motor for just to put it in there. But what motor I'm going to use in this? Uh, uh, probably a, a Piranha motor. I have a Piranha motor in there I'm going to use. This is a, a, a ball bearing motor. The with the green end bell here, the colored green end bell. But this is a 22500. I know on these cars over here, I've used the uh, Predator motor, <laughs> which uh, is a little bit long. I don't think it would fit here if I could put a Predator motor in it, the long can motor, which uh, I don't know if it would fit. Here's a long can motor, and brand new in the package. But yeah, yeah it would fit. <laughs> I could use a long can if you want. See, that's what's kind of cool if you want to put a, a long can motor and this you can make it a little bit quicker there's the you know the uh predator 20,500 long can motor and the long can motor is good for the 125th scale cars because they have more of that torque and they pull more weight and then they don't get as hot so that is a plug until you decide what motor you are will be blessed <laughs> yeah and it also helps with with soldering to keep everything aligned i use it for if you look in the very first part of the video i what i did this motor was in there, and that's how I did it. Now, right now, these are all rubbing on each other. I know I talked to you about to see that. So I'm going to true these and get rid of all this because I know this is all rubbing on here. That's why it looks that way. Once that's gone, everything's going to roll nicely, and you don't have to worry about that rubbing against the chassis. Uh, but uh, that is basically a chassis right there. It's a rolling chassis. Now, I haven't put body mounts on. Now, body mounts are pretty much, if you make it out of, you know, these pieces right here, 
and you basically would be doing you'd be using like some uh some pinch clamps to hold it on which i have around here there's a little alligator clips so you could use that too and hold it on and you would solder like here and then underneath and then on the other side i see huddy on the blower left hand corner yes sir this is the huddy <laughs> But really, my main one that's a really good good tool is these the one I have over there, which is the tire truer. How much that? Uh, how much off if protruding chassis you will cut off? Uh, you're talking about the front. I'll probably cut pretty close to about here, depending, because I don't need all this sticking out. Maybe a little bit shorter. I want the the guide to not you know make sure it's not hitting it. So I'll probably cut right there. Maybe it just depends. You know, it depends what I do. But all you left you would need to do is the body mounts, and then you'd have to measure the width of the car and then make sure you have the body mounts, you know, where they should be. And there's there's the car right there underneath. There's that. I mean, you could leave those on if you want to. I could leave them on and cut them. We'll have to see where the guide is at if it doesn't interfere because the guide can possibly interfere, but I don't think it will. But, uh, yep, there's a chassis, guys. Um, I mean, I hope you learned something from it. It's... Uh, not hard to do. I think the most important part is setting your front axle height to make sure your guide tongue is in the position where it needs to be because you don't want it, the axle too high, and then you put, you know, the tongue on, don't anticipate the braid, and then this thing will be like, you could, you could shim it, but it won't, <laughs> it won't bring it down because, you know, you can't shim it because it won't bring the wheels down or nothing because it's, the axle's too high. So then this is like, I'm kind of hard to I'm trying to explain it right. I'm probably not explaining it right. So you just want the the guide the guide tongue in the proper position, and you want the axle height in the proper position. So this doesn't. So you're able to drop this and have the wheels contact on the front. Now, if you run into a problem with, like with this piece, like if it's too high, and I've done this before, or shit, it's too high. Then what I've done is I push this down. If it's a little bit, I push pressure on it and push it down, and it will bend it down. And you just check on your block, make sure your all four corners obviously are you're not teetering, they're all contacting, which this is. And then that's you know, you could bend brass, it's not a big deal. You know, I've done it with a few of the 125th cars and stuff. So, but that looks pretty good, looks pretty straight. Well, it looks good on the on the block. You can see the ride height looks good. Put the body on. Now body height will depend on what you, you know, how you place the pads inside the body so say if you lift it up a little or lower you know but you got to get the tires true to really know where you're at but that's uh pretty much it you know that's pretty much it for the chassis you know what it's supposed to be so uh, i hope you guys enjoyed that i'm not going to go into the pads because all you're doing is just soldering the pads like this car, I'll show you right here. So this is, this is actually, so those are different. So here's an example of this car. So you can see where the pads are at. You would have to, make sure my hands are clean. See where I got the long pieces there. You just want to make sure that these are short and inside there. So this way you could, you know, have coverage. See, I have the holes are already pre-drilled there. That's where it should be. And then lining up the car and getting it, on there to make sure it's straight on both sides. That's fairly easy. You could get yourself a shorter jeweler's block and lie the chassis across it. And uh, then you could put the body on and kind of, you know, get your way. I do have videos on that. If you look through the videos, you can see everything that I've done the other ones. Thank you, uh, Clint. I appreciate that. But uh, any questions? We're about two hours and 13 minutes. I hope that helps. I'd like to see you guys. Really, honestly, I'm doing this because I want to see you guys send something into the uh, to home racing world because Harry loves to see people, especially first-time scratch builders. There's some guys that really, when they do it the first time, they do way better than you when I do it, and I've seen it. It's like, that makes me happy. If you could do a better job than I could do it, then, man, that's that's what I'm looking for is that. I could care less if, you know, you do far better or even make mine look like crap. I could care less about that. As long as you're able to do it, then man, that's that's what I'm looking for. That that's the excitement of other people actually making their own creations. And again, there's nothing wrong with buying slot cars because you know I've I do it. But when you create your own, 
and the first time I created one of these, I was kind of so enamored with like, wow, you know, I built that. It's going around the track. It is freaking good. I want to do it again. That's what happens. Once you do one, I guarantee you guys, you guys are going to start wanting to build all kinds of stuff. And then when you get into the 125th scale, that's where it's fun too. Because 125th scale, there are so many model kits available for you to build. And that's when it becomes like carte blanche. You're like, whoa, I could build one of those. Like, here's a car that I'm going to be building, and I'll let you know right now. I ordered a kit for it. So I don't know if you guys remember the Cannonball Run. I love the movie, The Cannonball Run. They had the car in the very beginning of the movie, and you all know what that is. That's what I'm building. I have a 125th scale Revell kit coming for that. And I'm going to build myself a Cannonball Lamborghini because that is uh, that is one of my favorite cars in that movie in the beginning. Does the pop of the stick matter? What flavor? <laughs> Uh, not really. We usually get the Walmart ones, but whatever, whatever your kids are eating, just steal it from them. But believe it or not, that's why I ate popsicles was because this is what Harry told me that you could use for also setting your body on your chassis is popsicle sticks. And if you look at some of his videos, he, he shows you, you do, you know, he shows you how he does that. So it's, you know, it's, there's a lot of, a lot of possibilities going back to, uh, 125th scale out there. I mean, there's a ton of possibilities. And if you want to hang in here a minute, I'm going to show you the cars that I've built in the past, if none of you have seen them. And I'll get them out here in a minute. Let me clean up real quick. And uh, I will get, because I have the scratch build case up here already. And I'll show you what I built and kind of go through a little explanation of it, of what you know it took to do this and that. But let me get all my tools put away. I like to have a clean, neat work area. That's just the way I am. Even though I'm that way at work, it's not neuroticism. It's making sure everything stays clean because that's the way it should be. So give me a sec here. As again, I organize all my tools away. All right. Oh, this is in the wrong spot. There you go. All right, put my big Bama Jamas up there. Big Mama Jamas. Here, this isn't. Um, there any other questions, you guys? Oh, there's one here at Gladstone. But, uh, it is great that you are so comfortable. You can screw up like we do <laughs> and keep going on. Hell yeah, I screw up a lot. <laughs> I do it on camera quite often, but you know what? I don't give a shit. That means I'm human. If you're really stuck on being perfect, then you shouldn't be making scratch build cards. <laughs> There's nothing, you know, I'm just like a regular guy that likes doing this hobby. I used to do big scale cars, but that got real expensive. So, uh, but I still have my hot rod in the garage. I just don't, you know, drive it around that much. But, okay, so there's your scratch built 132nd car. I could do a 125th one day, but just not yet. So let me go get a couple of the cars. Let me clean my hands real quick. And I'll show you the couple of the scratch built 125th scale cars and explaining stuff. That uh, why there's so many models available. So let me go off mic here for a sec to go get a car. Hold on. Give me a moment. Get the damn thing on. All right, are we ready? All right, so the first car I'm gonna show you is why I like 125th because this is the Smoking the Bandit Trans Am. And you see Bert's in there, he may not be exactly painted real nicely with his mustache and eyes, but he's in there and he, he's got a hat but 2004 gto and now we got a spammer for 69 mega.com for i don't know if you guys are interested in that but i'm not let me 
move that. Okay. Thanks, man. Uh, so this is, as you can see, I used the, the wheel inserts from the model and put them in there. That's one thing that's great about CB design wheels is that you could do that with your model. So if you need to use the wheels, you could trim them down and fit them in there. And uh, this has got a smaller motor in it, and there's the chassis, which I should have put a Predator one in there because this, this motor will tend to get a little hot. That's a Piranha. And uh, I'll have to cut this down a little to put it in there when I do it. And this is one eighth axles with a uh, 927 spur gear, 27 spur gear. And you can see how I did the body mounts. I used the interior as the mount. And then you can see the basic chassis I made. This is a different bracket. I forget what bracket this was. And you see, I used a diff used a commercial guide tongue right here on this one. Because this has that bend in it, if you could see it. And uh, you know, that's this car is rides around the track pretty decently. It's a it's a cool looking car. Well, I like it. And I'm I'm glad I built it. Now here's another one as you get more into it so this is a modified this is all brass and i made this chassis on my own i just and this is what i do i just yeah 120 fiscal they do have much selection gladstone big time this car right here all i did was or this chassis it just sat down and just started soldering and just came up with this and this is what i mean about having unique builds if you do things on your own you just just do it and then, you know, make the body for it. And these are the the uh, baby moons. Harry has a video on making these baby moons. These are really easy to do. And you'd be shocked what you used for these stupid things. And you could get them at Walmart. And it's it's very funny. And I painted them orange to match. And then, of course, the mortar detail. And then there's a driver in there as well. Whole bar. This is probably one of the favorite cars of Harry's. He named it the Orange Blossom. Uh but this is 125th scale. It's a cool looking car. I like it. Uh, oh, losing connection. Everybody there is saying that your connection is unstable. Please wait. We are trying to reconnect. I hope I didn't lose you. Somebody acknowledge if you're still there. <laughs> Oh, I think I lost everybody finally. Still here, okay. All right. So, anyways, okay. here's a you know a mod. So, gotcha. Thanks, guys. Because it said that your connection is unstable. Please wait while trying to reconnect. So I don't know if I lost people, but anyways, okay, I got you guys. Good. So this is the uh, the capability that you guys are are capable of. Once you start doing one and you start kind of like experimenting, these things come up in your head. You're like, hey, I could build that. I could build this. And you buy model kits and you just start, you know, start building them. Now, this car right here is the same thing you would do for a 125th scale, except for it's just bigger. So you'd use the uh, larger uh, brass for... This size would be for 125th scale that you could use, which is an eighth. Or you could use the one that I just showed you in the video. You could use this one, too, which there is a car that I had made out of that, too. <clears throat> so you just experiment with what, you know, you want to try out. Well, let me go grab another car. I'll grab a couple more cars and show you what I've done. Hold on a second. Again, i got to take this off. So, Hey, what's up, Robert Hill? Robert Hill is doing this. <laughs> All right, I'm back. Put this on. All right, so here's an example of what I mean about who could build some scratch build cars. I'm going to show you this car. This is a cool looking car. This is a GTO. 
This is a 67 because the back of it, the way it looks. Or actually, no, this is 66 because the bow tie back, and that's 67. Okay. There's the chassis. This is a cool looking car, and my grandson built this car. I helped him build it. I told him what to do, and he saw it on his own. So this is what I mean. If if my grandson could do this, and he was 12 when he did this, then you guys could do it. I mean, all he did was follow what needed to be done. He painted the body. He did the interior. He did everything. You know, I helped him with the wheels and stuff, but he did the chassis and soldered it, and then he put it a little bit together. So, I mean, he, he did a good job. Merry Christmas to you too, Robert. And this thing's got a cool rake when it goes down the track because it's got a rake on it, and it's really neat. This body actually set up perfectly. We kind of set it in there perfectly. So that's an example of what I'm talking about, what you could do. Here's another mod. No, I did this one. <laughs> this is different. This has got pipes. And these are pipes from brass. And all I did is these little blower had holes, and I shoved them in there, and I made it this, this, this car. So this was based off Harry's. Uh, there's an article that he did it's called the dingus build. So this is based off the dingus build Now you can see these channels. I bent I bent these on a on a vice to make and mimic a frame And you could do that too and I have a video on doing this car and bending these and uh, pictures of it and everything so I mean if you look through Through the uh, video archive there on area 51 you'll find it But this car is is a cool looking car. It runs really good and it's a great car Here's the other one I was telling you <clears throat> that I used a different channel. And then I used wire. So you could use wire with piano wire with brass. And this is a cool looking car. Actually, this is a video is on my page on how I built this car, this chassis. And uh, this was done with Createx water-based paint. As you can see, it just took a tumble there. It got some scrapes because we took this to Home Racing World and it did a couple flips, but... And it's a cool car. I mean, it's it's a great looking car. I really, really enjoyed building this one and painting it and detailing it. And I used a gold marker with this, a paint marker to do this. And some silver and, you know, to paint wheels and all that stuff. And then we have <coughs> this car. It's a GT40. So I made this from a Polar Lights kit. And this chassis was pretty basic. And... Uh, it, it's a good running car. It's got super wide wheels. <laughs> you can see the air ones in the front. It's a sharp looking car. It's got a driver in it, of course. And uh, this is a fun car to drive around. So, I mean, there's there's a lot of capabilities in doing stuff in 125th and in 132nd, just like, you know, the Ford that I built before I left the other house, this one right here. So, I mean, you just got to get to it and, you know, try it out. So, uh, yeah, I do dig them Pontiacs. I've been with Pontiacs for a long time, Robert. <laughs> I got one in the garage, too. So <clears throat> this is what the capability is from this. You guys could do what you want. You just have to go at it and stuff. So <laughs> Yeah, the, the harder you work on your car, the more careful you have to be and the more fun. Yep, that's true to a point, so. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, if you have any questions later on down the road, you could email me. Uh, my email is slingshotslots at gmail.com. Or you can get me on the Area 51 uh, Facebook Messenger. I'm there, too. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm going to sign off. It's been two and a half hours. We're past dinner time at our house. so <laughs> I'm sure my wife wants to eat, and we want to get going with dinner. So... As always, you guys uh, take care and have fun racing and a Merry Christmas to all of you. Take care.